Hi, I'm McFarlane Muleli. Now this teacher guide is about the Mindset Learn series of lessons called Oral Texts. In this guide, we tell you what the series of lessons is about and how it links to the curriculum. We also discuss ideas for using the lessons with your learners. You may want to make notes, so have a pencil and paper ready. Learners are often required to make speeches in the English classroom, and this is a form of oral communication that they are quite familiar with. Oral communication, however, includes a range of types of communication, many of which have very interesting histories, professional performers and unique styles of conveying messages. In this series of lessons, we aim to broaden learners' knowledge of the different forms of communication by discussing and showing examples of praise poetry, storytelling and performance poetry. There are six lessons in this series. Forms of oral text, vocal and physical performances, praise poetry, oral poetry, aspects of storytelling, sharing messages through oral texts. These lessons address learning outcome one, listening and speaking of the national curriculum statement, as well as the assessment standards which require learners to demonstrate knowledge of different forms of oral communication for social purposes, demonstrate the skills of listening to and delivering oral presentations. To see the specific assessment standards for each lesson, look out for the curriculum links which are clearly stated at the beginning of each video lesson. This series of lessons includes interviews with praise poets, storytellers and oral poets, as well as examples of professional performers communicating in different ways. By showing people performing different forms of oral texts, we give learners examples of how to communicate in different ways. We also use the examples of performance poetry and storytelling to make checklists of how to communicate successfully in these ways. In this series, we also discuss the history of these different forms of communication as well as the techniques that they traditionally include. This will make learners better equipped to watch these types of oral performances and identify the devices that they are using as well as to perform in different ways themselves. If possible, you will find it useful to watch the videos by yourself before you show them to your learners. This will enable you to make notes of places to stop the video and ask questions or have a discussion. It will also allow you to see when and how you could best incorporate the video lessons into your learning program. You could also think of activities you could do with your learners before or after watching the videos. Throughout the lessons, you will see the pause icon. The pause indicates a good place to stop the video and get your learners to complete a quick activity or have a discussion about something. Obviously, you don't have to stop the lesson at every pause, but should you choose to use them, you will find that they help to get learners involved and keep them paying attention. To get learners interested in these lessons and to keep them involved, you will find it useful to get them to do the activities and the tasks presented in the lesson. These tasks are linked to the learning outcomes given in the lessons and to at least one assessment standard in the curriculum policy. Completing the tasks will give both you and your learners evidence of how well they have achieved the lesson outcomes. The tasks can also be used as part of a learner's record of progress towards the assessment standards for each grade. Now, let's have a more detailed look at the lessons in the series and how you can use them in your classroom. The first lesson introduces learners to different forms of oral texts, focusing on oral poetry, praise poetry and storytelling. We discuss some of the differences between oral and written communication as well as what makes these forms of communication an important part of our history. As an extension to this series of lessons, it would be super if you could arrange someone in your community to perform some praises, poetry or storytelling for your learners. Lesson 2 looks at vocal and physical performance. In this lesson, we include interviews with professional performers to establish what makes a good oral performer. We also discuss techniques learners can use to improve their own oral performances. 
If learners are aware of exactly what elements of a performance they are being assessed on, it will help them to be better prepared to perform in front of the class. You could use this lesson as a basis for drawing up a rubric against which learners' performances will be assessed. In the third lesson, we examine praise poetry. This form of communication has a very long history. We discussed where it comes from and where it is used today. Learners may enjoy making up their own praises and performing these to the class using the traditional structure of praise poetry that is outlined in the lesson. Lesson 4 considers oral poetry. In preparation for this lesson, you may want to find poems that would lend themselves well to being well performed. Learners could then perform these poems in groups using some of the techniques discussed in the lesson. And they could also use the poems to find examples of the figures of speech that are mentioned in the lesson. At the end of the lesson, slam poetry is discussed. As an enjoyable activity to promote poetry, you may want to hold a poetry slam in the class. In the fifth lesson, we look at different aspects of storytelling. Using examples taken from a range of stories, we discuss the characteristics of a good story. You may want to use the checklist that is developed to analyze a short story that you have read in class. You could also encourage learners to write stories of their own and then to tell these to younger children using the techniques for developing and presenting a story that are discussed. Lesson 6 of this series explores sharing messages through oral texts. In this lesson, Vanessa Bauer tells a story that will appeal to teenagers. The story is then analyzed in terms of its content and presentation. After the story has been told, you may want to stop the tape and ask learners to critique the story and Vanessa's performance before continuing to watch the lesson. Watching a story that is told well and identifying the traits that make it successful will help learners master the techniques of presenting oral texts for themselves. We hope that you will enjoy using these lessons to teach learners about oral texts. If you would like more information about using these lessons or lesson notes for each lesson, please refer to our website www.mindset.co.za. Thank you.